Dear Professor Seufeling, you are a specialist in gastrointestinal oncology and have been a lecturer at Advanced Oncology on the topic uh, of GI tumors for many years. In addition, you serve in many other important capacities. Would you briefly introduce yourself to our viewers? Okay, I'm not so sure about the importance of the capacities I'm serving, but uh, here in Ulm, I'm the head of the Department of Internal Medicine 1, which is gastroenterology, endocrinology, and nephrology, and I'm the deputy director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center, and I'm the, the speaker of the Center for Personalized Medicine in Ulm, which is a novel uh, construct uh, mainly serving to improve the patient care in the, in the area of personalized medicine. On a national level, I, am, uh, I have the privilege to serve as the president of the German Cancer Society, mainly due to my work in the guidelines program of the German Cancer Society, and I'm the speaker of the coordinating office of the uh, German guidelines in oncology. We have the largest oncology guideline programs worldwide. This is something we can be proud of. This is not my fault. This is, of course, the work of many people. I'm serving in the German Cancer Aid, which is our greatest cancer charity, as the chair of the, uh, of the Commission for Prevention. And, um, and this is, I think, wraps it up nicely. Thank you. In fulfilling these different commitments, you strive to improve the cancer care using evidence-based approaches. What do you consider the role of personalized medicine in this regard? I think personalized medicine is, the, is already here and is, I think, our challenge for the years to come because we now can characterize a tumor thoroughly. We can do a genome sequencing, we can do proteomics, immunomics. There is a lot we can do, but we have to bring this to the patient and we have to get this knowledge translated into clinical practice. And this is the idea of personalized medicine, particularly in cases where there is no established uh, treatment available anymore. But no, of course, also, as we know from lung cancer, in the very early stages where we can identify clearly subgroups that benefit vastly from a particular treatment with in the, uh, mostly much lower side effects than a conventional treatment. I think we can say we are all in awe of the 48-hour diagnostics and treatment stratification process of our hemato-oncologists. What are the challenges we must consider particularly if it comes to solid tumors in terms of diagnostics and therapy? First of all, let me say this is tremendous and we really envy the hematologists. And, um, we have to get there. I'm absolutely with you. The problem is uh, on two sides. First of all, in hematology, sometimes you have much more clearer image with respect to driver mutations. So it's more straightforward what you have to analyze, whereas solid tumors are more complex. That doesn't really, it's no excuse. So we have to set up platforms. We're trying to do that in the framework of the National Center for Tumor Diseases, which has one uh, of the sites, Ulm is now one of these sites. And where we establish platforms organoid-based, circulating tumor DNA, tumor sequencing that really tries to emulate that. In, we hope that we can achieve that, probably not in 48 hours, but to really do justice to the more higher complexity of the solid tumors. What keeps you up at night if it comes to treatment of patients with GI cancers? Okay, if it comes to treatment of patients with GI cancers, we, what bothers me and what really keeps me up at night is how we can improve treatment prediction to really have a treatment that is tailored to the patient that works and not just having to assess it two months later. This is, for example, what we're trying to do with organoids, uh, patient-based tumor material that we grow in the dish in a three-dimensional culture, treat with compounds and try to see whether this keeps us gets us information for treating the patient better than we can do conventionally. And we're just in the process of designing some clinical trials, submitting them to the BNBF for funding and getting that started because I think this has a lot of potential to get away from the birds fly as we do at the moment, like the old Greeks looked at the weather and said, if the birds fly low, the weather's going to get bad. And this is a little bit what we do in cancer sometimes. So kind of the opposite, or you're striving for the... We want the to do the opposite. We want to give a rational approach and use everything we can do at this mm -hmm. moment in time to improve yeah. treatment and to predict treatment so that we can really say, if you get that, I know it's working, and if not, if I hope it's working. What is the benefit for referring physicians um, if they send patients to the Center for Personalized Medicine? I think that's a classical win-win situation because in the Center for Personalized Medicine, we thrive at getting the optimal diagnostics of the tumor, into, including uh, tumor sequencing in a multidisciplinary tumor board with all the experts present. And then we try to come to a really informed decision, what is the best treatment for this particular tumor? We sometimes, quite often actually, we can also say there is no other, there is no better treatment for this patient at this moment in time, but quite frequently, 
I would say up to 30 to 40 percent, we do find a target that is worthwhile addressing and a novel treatment. And the advantage of the center is that we can also get funding by the statutory health insurance companies for this experimental treatment, which is tremendous because that hasn't been there before in the whole history of the German healthcare system. And of course, the patient gets referred back to, his, to the referring physician, and the treatment is, is then at the place where the patient lives. So we can also accommodate the need for the patient to have a local treatment with his uh, physician of trust, and we have this diagnostics and the decision making centralized, and we cooperate in this respect. At Advanced Oncology, you serve not only as a lecturer, but also you're supervising individual master thesis. What opportunities do you see for students and what are the benefits for interested professionals to dedicate two years to studying? I think this is a, this is a great course and this is great beneficial benefits for all the students. Particularly, it prepares you for functions where, where otherwise there is no real preparation. There is no course where you get such a big overview on various topics uh, in clinical oncology as in this course, from budgeting über, to applying for grants to actually uh, dealing with hospital, uh, with the hospitals and as well as, of course, knowledge in, in clinical oncology. So, for example, when you thrive to become head of a uh, comprehensive cancer center or organizing cancer care in your region, this is a fantastic course. And this is one of the reasons why in our advanced clinician scientist program we now included the, the offer to really get this course for free because we think it's so advantageous for also clinician scientists to get into this course. Thank you very much for this interview and your commitment, Professor Sarkeleit. My pleasure. Thanks very much.